Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about is from a basic science perspective, but with implications, I hope, outside basic science, is um, an environment that we've created in Stockholm specifically to deal with membrane proteins. And we've mentioned membrane proteins so a number of times already. So I'm not going to talk about specific projects at this point, but just try to give you a general feel for the field of membrane proteins and how one can approach that and, and hopefully leave you with an impression that Stockholm Uppsala is a pretty good place for, uh, for, for this type of work. So it's, um, <clears throat> so in, in my point of, from my point of view, it's, uh, it's this center that we've created about four or five years ago, Center for Biomembrane Research at Stockholm University. Um, that's sort of the, <clears throat> the focus here, the in, our, our way into membrane proteins. So, so why are membrane proteins in particular so important? Um, so as the name implies, membrane proteins sit in the, at the perimeter of the cell in the so-called plasma membrane. Um, and being there, they ha they're at, in a very, at a very important location in the cell because everything that goes into the cell or outside, out of the cell has to pass through this limiting membrane. And therefore, uh, it has to pass through membrane proteins in one way or another. And this could be signaling, so it can be signals that come from outside and tell the cell to do something, or uh, it can be drugs, of course, that somehow interfere with the signaling, or it can also be small molecules that the, need, that the cell needs to pass back and forth across the membrane. All of these events are catalyzed or are dependent on proteins that are stuck into the cell envelope, into the membrane of the cell. So these can be so-called receptors that signal across the membrane, that mediate signaling across the membrane, or they can be pores, channels, or transporters that you know, can, can move small molecules back and forth across the membrane. <clears throat> so because they are, uh, and this is to give you a little bit uh, more of a realistic view of what membrane proteins, what the kind of environment they live in. So the blue stuff here is a particular membrane protein. In this case, it's, an, it's a water channel uh, that's in this compute, uh, molecular dynamic simulation has been stuck into a membrane, this green stuff, and then you separate the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell, so these are water molecules. And you can see them moving back and forth across these water channels that are modeled in this particular movie here. Now, you might say, why do we need water channels? Uh, and actually, just to give you an example of an important membrane protein, for you right now, very important membrane protein. Um, so <clears throat> the, our body produces about 200 liters of primary urine every day. But we don't need to pee 200 liters, fortunately. And that is because we have water channels in our kidneys that can resorb 99% of, of the primary urine back into the body. And so we only produce about one liter of urine um, so there are some poor patients that have problems with their water channels. And uh, you can imagine what that should be like, right? <clears throat> so that's just one example of why membrane proteins can be extremely important from, you know, from a clinical point of view. <clears throat> now, because they are so important, and roughly 30% of all proteins, one-third of all proteins in our cells, in our body, are membrane proteins. So this, the, the, the cell invests quite a lot into different types of membrane proteins. But in fact, from a drug perspective, uh, they're dispropor disproportionately important. So roughly half of all small molecule drug targets currently, you know, the, of the current marketable drugs are in fact membrane proteins. So here is a breakdown of different types of membrane proteins, so-called G-protein coupled receptors. Those are signaling molecules, so they transmit signals in and out of cells, especially into cells. A large number of you know, drugs are directed against G-protein coupled receptors. And then there are things like ion channels that we have in our nervous system, for instance, nerve cells that mediate uh, nerve conduction. They're transporters for small molecules of other kinds and of, of all kinds of molecules. And, and, and there are other types as well. But roughly half of all drugs, drug targets are membrane proteins. So these are very important for the drug industry. Um, and yet they're very difficult to handle from a biochemical point of view. Just to give you one example from a Swedish perspective, uh, 
I think LOSEC is the gen brand name in the UK. I'm not quite sure, but this is the anti-ulcer uh, drug that was developed by AstraZeneca. Uh, the, new, the, new, the newer version is called Nexium. So this really kept AstraZeneca you know, alive for 10 years or something, 10, 15 years, and made huge profits for AstraZeneca. This is a drug that you take if you have ulcer problems. And the reason it works, this is the drug, the reason it works is that it blocks a proton channel that sits in our stomach. So this protein actually pumps protons, these green things, from the cells that line the stomach into the uh, gastric juice. So there, here is the stomach side. So this is a pump that uses chemical energy, th this big molecule, uh, to drive the machine that takes protons from the inside of the cell into the stomach to make it acidic. So that's why you're, you know, when, you have, when you throw up, you get this burning, um, you know, this heartburn, and that's because you have this acid that comes out. And the acid is produced by this protein, putting acid into the stomach. So, of course, if you have an ulcer, it's not so nice to have a lot of acid right next to that wound. And so what LOSEC or Nexium does is it basically puts a spanner in this machine and just blocks it solid. So it can no longer transport protons. And, and then your, the acidity goes down in your stomach and you know, things improve. So that's another example of where a particular type of membrane protein has, is, is extremely important from a pharmaceutical point of view. Um, now, as I said, these proteins are difficult to handle, uh, much more difficult than water-soluble proteins. And so it's taken a long time to actually get um, get a way to, well, to, to improve our understanding of how these proteins work and what they look like and so on. So you need a concerted effort to really study these things. And in Stockholm, what we started, as, as I said, some five years ago, thanks to a fairly large grant, was uh, a center for biomembrane research, as we call it, which is focused on membrane, <coughs> understanding membrane proteins from all kinds of perspectives. Uh, and we already had a good, very good environment to build on, but thanks to starting the center, it's now become kind of a major, <clears throat> a major uh, international player in, in the membrane protein world. Uh, and so I would say there are basically four major sites for membrane protein research in Europe. It's us in Stockho Stockholm. It's a place in, in, in Denmark. It's uh, the MRC site in Cambridge. <clears throat> and uh, Frankfurt also has a very focused effort on membrane proteins. And those are really the four main sites. And incidentally, in membrane proteins, um, Europe has been leading the, the world for a long time. We've, we're still, I think, matching the US. And for a long time, Europe was ahead of the US in membrane proteins, partly because in the, U, in the US they had to focus on very short-term grants. And you know, membrane proteins being difficult were not good uh, to put in a short-term grant because you couldn't really get good results in a few years. Now, of course, there have been big investments in the U.S. as well, so they are kind of, uh, you know, picking up um, as compared to Europe. But it has been a European specialty for a long time, and still is, Europe is still very strong in this area. So what we've been trying to do in Stockholm, we have a little bit different focuses on these, on these four sites, but in Stockholm, what we've been trying to build is, is a very multidisciplinary environment to really be able to attack questions relating to membrane proteins from from a number of different angles. So starting from basic cell biology, which is understanding how these proteins are made, where they're placed in the cell, et cetera, what the role is in cellular metabolism, to various mechanistic issues, to um, proteomics. We talked about you know, identifying all the proteins, in, in our case, all the proteins in the membrane of a given organism. Um, <clears throat> but in a more... Uh, applied sense, developing methods for expression, expression and purification of membrane proteins, which ha has their own particular problems. Um, structural biology, which is determining the kinds of structures I showed you for you know, the pump and so on, which is based on, on X-ray crystallography. A very important part is bioinformatics and computational chemistry. So these little movie clips I showed you have, of course, been produced by computational chemists using data de derived from these other, um, these other experts. Uh, 
and, and all the way to technological applications of various kinds. Um, so this is the way we've been trying to build an integrated environment and it's, it's come to the point where the brand name has now become so strong that we're attracting young scientists from Sweden and elsewhere that come with their own funding and just want to be in this environment uh, and, and do their own research. So th this I think is, is one very obvious way to build academic research environments that can span from very basic science to, uh, to, to technological applications and, and spin off at least small startup companies. Um, so what we have to wrap up, what we have in, in, at CBR is we have pretty strong basic science, I would say. This is just to flash some high profile papers that have come out from us in the past five years or so, just to impress you. But So these are all nature and science publications of various, uh, treating various aspects of how membrane proteins are made and, and, uh, and uh, what properties they have and so on. Um, but we also have, and we also have been able to spin off some companies that are still very small, but you know, given that the center has only been there for five years, it's, it's, uh, we're quite happy about that. So there's, so far there's one, there's one company that, that's in computational chemistry and that's taken methods from computational chemistry um, into cloud computing and it turns out that you can apparently do interesting, th more generally interesting things in cloud computing using the kind of computational tools that have been developed in, in, in protein science. And also in this company that does production and, and purification work, uh, method, methods development in, in membrane proteins. So basically what, what I want to leave you with is that number one, membrane proteins are a import, very important class of proteins. So protein chemistry as, to, as applied to membrane proteins is something that's a, a hot growth area at the moment. I think it comes back to GE Healthcare that you know, needs to develop techniques that are geared to membrane proteins rather than soluble proteins. So, I mean, antibodies are trivial compared to, uh, to membrane proteins. Um, they are very important from a drug development perspective, from a pharma, uh, pharma perspective. Um, and in Stockholm, Uppsala region, we have very strong basic research in, uh, in the membrane protein area. Uh, and I think that's where my 11 point five minutes are <laughs> so, uh, so I, I realized this is kind of a, you know, a kind of a, a, a broad painting with a broad brush. Uh, but I think rather than trying to explain one or other of these basic science projects that we're doing in detail and losing you in the first two minutes, it's, it's better I try to make a plug for membrane proteins as an interesting area that you may want to look into at one point or another.